So you've canceled your claims made malpractice insurance policy, and now your carrier has given you a tail quote. But it looks like there are multiple options, and the price is significantly different depending on which option you choose. Well, the reason for the different prices is likely that the coverage is different. You likely have an option for an unlimited tail and maybe a few options for limited tails. So what's the difference? And how do you know which one to pick? Well, let's unpack it together. Stay tuned. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. All right, let's jump in. So we've talked about tail insurance on several episodes before, but as a little refresher, let me give you a quick recap of what the coverage is and why it's important. Tail insurance is an extension of your malpractice policy that is required upon cancellation when you have claims made coverage. Your tail starts at your cancellation date and then it extends your protection into the future for any claims that may be made against you later on for the patients that you treated during the time of your original insurance period. Here's an example. Let's say we have a dermatologist in Chicago, Illinois, who bought her claims made insurance policy for the very first time on January 1st, 2014. She renewed that insurance every year for 10 years, and then she decided to close her practice and cancel her policy on January 1st, 2024. Once she cancels the policy, her malpractice carrier will give her an offer to buy tail insurance. This tail insurance will start on her cancellation date, which in this case will be January 1st, 2024, and it will extend her protection into the future, offering her a longer period of coverage for any claims that may still be filed against her for the patients that she treated from January 1st, 2014 until January 1st, 2024. Just as a quick side note, if this dermatologist would have had occurrence coverage, she would not have to buy tail. Remember, occurrence policies stand on their own and you do not need to obtain tail insurance after you cancel this type of coverage. If our derm friend decides not to buy her tail, then her protection ends and there will be no more coverage if a claim is filed against her any time after that cancellation date. So it's really important that you handle your tail insurance correctly. Otherwise, you leave yourself exposed. Again, let me just be clear, if you don't buy your tail after you cancel your claims made policy, then you are essentially uninsured. Your policy has ended, and if a claim comes in after this time, there is no insurance, even if the event occurred when your policy was active in the past. Now, there are two types of tail that you can purchase, unlimited tails or limited tails. An unlimited tail is the most robust and comprehensive kind of tail coverage. It does not have an expiration date, so the tail covers you indefinitely into the future. It even extends coverage to your estate in the event that a doctor is sued but passes away before the case is resolved. Most tail quotes are issued as unlimited tails, so it is the standard option that is offered to healthcare providers. You've probably heard me say on the podcast a few times before that the price of tail is two times your mature premium. Well, that is the typical rate for an unlimited tail. Again, the industry standard for tail insurance is to issue unlimited tails to healthcare providers. For some malpractice carriers, unlimited tails are the only option that they'll give you. But sometimes a doctor doesn't want unlimited coverage or they are looking for a more cost-effective way to extend their protection a bit. Well, if you don't want or need an unlimited tail, then you can purchase a limited tail, which provides protection for a shortened amount of time. The most common limited tails are one-year tails, two-year tails, five or even 10-year tails. 
With a limited tail, the protection ends at the end of the term. So if a claim were to be filed beyond that time frame, then there would no longer be coverage. Limited tails are less expensive than unlimited tails, but the price varies based on how long the tail goes. The idea of a limited tail can be attractive, and while I'm not here to tell you that it's the wrong choice, I do want to point out two things that can cause issues for doctors when they choose to go the limited tail route. Many times doctors will look at the statute of limitations in their state, and then they'll choose to roll the dice, believing that the window for filing a lawsuit has closed, or will soon close, meaning that they don't have any real risk. But remember that the statute of limitation laws vary by state. And although these laws do set a time limit on a plaintiff's right to file a medical malpractice lawsuit, it's not so simple. There are two common exceptions to the law that allow a patient to file a malpractice case beyond the standard window of time. First is date of discovery. This exception allows the statute of limitations to be extended until the patient discovers that he or she was the victim of medical malpractice, or reasonably should have discovered the malpractice. This means that the statute of limitations clock doesn't start ticking until the discovery actually occurs. The second exception has to do with the age of majority or issues involving minors. This exception allows for an extension of the statute of limitations until a minor child reaches the age of majority, which in most states is age 18. In both of these instances, a shorter term limited tail may not be sufficient time to protect you for any future filed claims. Okay, let's go back to our dermatology example. After 10 years of practice, she has canceled her insurance and her carrier has given her the following tail options. First, a one-year extended reporting period, which would cost her $11,778. Second, they've given her a two-year extended reporting period, which would be $14,723. A three-year extended reporting period would cost her $20,612, or an unlimited extended reporting period would cost $23,556. The rates aren't significantly different in this example, so our dermatologist would need to consider carefully which options she wants to choose. And when it's your turn to buy the tail, you'll want to carefully review all of your coverage options to determine for yourself which type of tail best fits your needs. There is no one size fits all here, so your agent can help you review your options and provide their thoughts. And remember, you can always shop around if you want to compare tail quotes from other carriers. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. And don't forget that our mailbag link is now live on our website. So if you have a question that you'd like me to review here on the podcast, check out the link below where you can drop us a line and ask your question or schedule a quick 10 minute phone call for a personal consultation to discuss your unique insurance needs. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.